Hello and what is up guys, Ra here and welcome back to some more automation and of course Beam and G Drive. So what we're doing today is building ourselves the best sports car possible. It's going to be a competitor to the Mazda Miata, which is pretty much the poster child for any modern day sports car. So what we're doing is building a car using the Mazda Miata body. It's going to be better than the Mazda Miata in every single way. It's going to have more power, it's going to be lighter, and it's going to be more balanced overall. Of course, we can't get much more balanced than the Mazda Miata, but we're going to get there. And after we build this car, we're going to drive it in Beam and G Drive and see how this thing drives. It's going to be a cheap, lightweight, decent power, front engine, rear wheel drive sports car. First things first, partial aluminum panel material. We want to keep the cost down, but not, but also keep it quite light as well. Monocoque chassis like every modern car. Now, I'm thinking steel chassis material. Now, that might be a bit heavier. It might be a little counterintuitive, but things like HS steel or glued aluminum are quite expensive. So, we want to keep it like this for now. We might change it later on, but this is fine. We'll go sort of double wishbone front and multi link in the rear. So, a very nice overall suspension setup. I have actually made a Mazda Miata competitor like two years ago when I first started the channel. It was like my third video ever. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and make another car very similar to this. So that thing has a Boxer 4 engine, and I think we're going to go ahead and do that as well. So, a Boxer 4. I got 1.8 liter NA Boxer 4. Uh, VVT all accounts. I don't think we need VVL. I don't think so. We'll double check what we need. Let's just go through the engine here. Direct injection. Um, performance mid intake probably. I want it to be decent on gas as well. Because it's going to be, you know, uh, an everyman sports car basically. Let's go for like a straight through secondary muffler. We don't really need dual exhaust. But let's increase the red line to a nice and healthy 9,000. Now the Mazda Miata is a car you kind of want to really string out, and it doesn't have the crazy high red line. I think like the newest version, the ND2 version, has like a 7200 RPM red line, and we want more than that. That's not enough revs for me to be honest. Let's keep going here. Let's give it um, a little more fuel mixture because I like solid round numbers. I kind of want to go for a roadster because that's what makes the Mazda Miata pretty great. So we'll keep it like that. Let's go for a rear wheel drive, obviously a six speed. Maybe it's not six speed manual is fine. It's gonna be a pure. Lightweight, cheap sports car. Lower the top speed down just a little bit. Let's have nice short gears. I want to really like throw through those, go through those gears nicely. Let's give it like a geared LSD and some sports tires. Leave it like that. Let's go for a sport interior and let's go for like a standard or basic infotainment. Hydraulic power steering. Now variable uh, hydraulic might be better, but I think hydraulic is going to be nice. It's going to be like a classic steering feel. Let's give it ESC. Obviously, we don't need launch control. They'll give it some standard safety, not the best. Decently fancy suspension, so 37 mpg. It weighs, it's it's quite heavy actually. It's 3,200 pounds. It's quite porky. Uh, it costs thirty thousand dollars. It's a little expensive, a little porky actually. So it's not the best. The weight distribution is quite nice. It's actually a little rear bias, which is strange for a front engine car. Let's go ahead though and change it to aluminum. Can add a little bit of weight, which will help us out with that weight distribution. It's getting a little better. Okay, so the car is pretty much engineered. I spent like the last twenty or thirty minutes just like fine-tuning the car back and forth. I even experimented with a bigger engine, with a, uh, a Boxer 6 instead of a Boxer 4. What I've done was try to get the weight distribution as close as I could to 50-50 without going very, very crazy on the cost or on the weight. Those are my two options here. Uh, for some reason, these automation cars seem to be quite a bit heavier than the real-life counterparts, because this is the same body as a Mazda Miata, and that thing weighs like, what, 2,200 or so pounds? Ours weighs around 2,400, which is still pretty light by modern standards, very light by modern standards, actually. Except ours has got now a 2.1 liter Boxer 4 with 250 horsepower and 180 pound feet of torque. And it's quite a broad power curve still, the, the torque curve at least. It's a very linear power curve, horsepower curve, very, very linear. Um, I changed a couple of things. The cheapest option actually for body panels and stuff turned out to be, instead of going with like steel, instead of going with like um, partial carbon fiber or partial aluminum, carbon fiber was only like, it wasn't crazy amounts more. And the weight bad, the weight difference was just so dramatic. If we go for steel chassis too, actually, that makes it quite a bit. It's not that much heavy lighter, actually. Glue aluminum is okay. Like, this brings us to around $40,000, which isn't crazy. Um, like, I think you can get, like, a very, very top spec Mazda Miata probably around the $40,000 range. Um, which, yeah, we, we can keep it there. It's 33 MPG, which is quite good. But 250 horsepower in a car that weighs 2,400 pounds or 2,300 pounds now. 4.4 seconds to 100, which is very, very, very quick. We've got magnesium wheels, which isn't as expensive as you might think. Uh, one thing we have, though, is square tires. So, uh, square tires are cheaper uh, in a lot of ways than staggered tires, which means, like, two different size tires. So, we've got the same tires all the way around, which is a little bit cheaper. Um, but it oversteers for a little more. But that's okay, because this car is kind of meant to oversteer, so that's totally fine. And the markets don't like it at all. Um, it's, automation estimates how much car sales you get, and we're estimating we'll get 11 cars sold 
per year. 11 cars sold per year. We didn't get the weight distribution to be perfect. It is a 49.3, 50.7 weight distribution front rear. It's not perfect. The car weighs 2,300 pounds. Not perfect. It's a little heavier. It's a little bit imperfect of a weight distribution. It's a little bit worse than the Mazda Miata. I think the Mazda Miata is just under 50-50. Um, I think it's a little bit front biased, actually. Um, we're a little rear biased, which is very strange, but I'll leave it. That's okay. That's okay. So what we're going to do is design this car. Uh, I'll see you guys. So sit back, relax, guys, and of course... I hope you enjoy. Alright, so I am building my Mazda Miata competitor. This thing is going to be, you know, very similar to Miata in the sense that it's the same body, so it's hard to look different. It's still going to be a very happy, nice little road. It's going to have a nice smile on the front. Hopefully, it's going to be a Vanderine branded car, which is my uh, Dutch sports car, kind of luxury car company. They may, they compete against Mercedes-Benz, etc. It's going to be a, a competitor to the Miata, but a bit more upscale. The cost might be a little more. I might tune the car uh, off camera or during this time lapse just a little bit. I totally forget because I made this a little bit ago. So what I'm doing now is actually building uh, the front end. And this includes the headlights, the grille, the hood bulge, and the front intakes, etc. I'm now spacing out the wheels just good enough now. And back on the front end, I want to add these uh, LED charge signals with some sort of sensors for the front cameras or front sensors, parking sensors of the front. Uh, working on the grill a little bit more using reverse dog tape, kind of like parts, etc. A big event on the side. And I do sort of get rid of the entire front end and I restart it. So I've got this sort of oval shaped grill, these oval shaped headlights. Um, but I do give up on them because they are too difficult to work with. So I go to the side of the car, adding a bit of detail on the side there, adding a door handle. The mirrors are already built into the body, so that's all fine and well. Adding a V on the top of the hood for Vanderine. And now what I'm doing is just sort of making the inside of the headlights, which I'm going to go ahead and redo it later on in the video. The back end, though, the back end is going to be similar but different to my previous Vanderine cars. It's going to have these quite generic taillights, but I think they fit the car quite nicely. What I'm doing is using these sort of glowing LED strips to make the uh, the main taillight housing and the main taillight assembly, basically. Adding a sharp point to the corners, adding a bit more detail to the body, using some sharp edges and some soft creases to make what I think is a pretty decent looking rear end. It's not that, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. Adding a area where the license plate sort of didn't go, but I do change it later on, I believe. Adding our big dual, our big dual outlet exhaust because this thing is a sporty car. Adding the actual license plate above it now. And adding another V in the back and a nice big old wing. Now the front. I go ahead and actually redo pretty much the entire front. I go ahead and actually, yeah, I delete every single fixture pretty much on the front. Uh, I redo the grille, everything except for the side vents, actually. The side vents stay. I change the headlights to a circle shape, which I think I change again uh, to a MDHL sort of oval-shaped headlights. Then I change the grille and I remake out these sort of bumper bars, adding more detail to the grille. And then adding just some, yeah, detailing inside the grille now, basically, all the way around. And I've changed the color to uh, this gray, actually, before. Uh, and in front of us is the 2020 Vanderine Bonaire Plus 4. All right, guys, so like I said, this is the 2020 Vanderine Bonaire Plus 4. Uh, plus 4 is the plus branding is sort of Vanderine's top-of-the-line moniker for all their performance cars. You got the Plus 4, the Plus 6, and the Plus 8 for the Big Mac Daddy cars. The Plus 4 is the highest performance trim of the Bonaire Sports Coupe. Is that what this is? It's a sports coupe. It's a sports car, okay? It weighs 2,300 pounds. It's very light. It's actually a bit rear-biased, which is quite interesting. 2.1 liter boxer four that rips to 9,000 RPM. It's got 250 horsepower and what 100, 180 or so pound feet of torque. So it's it's got pretty good torque. It's got some Miata style to it. Maybe this car was actually built off the Miata chassis um, and just sort of restyled to be a Vanderine car. Cause I can, I can imagine that this is, you know, it's a rebadged Mazda Miata. Uh, if you guys don't know what, what my Vanderine brand is, it's actually a Dutch brand. So this is a Dutch rebadged car. It's basically a sport, sporty luxury car company that would compete against BMW, etc. Except they like to have naturally aspirated engines. And even in 2020, they still aren't using turbochargers because you know, turbochargers are lame and they don't want that. I mean, like they use turbochargers, just not in their top end. All the plus cars are all naturally aspirated, bigger engines. 
And that's why this is a, like 2.1 liters is pretty big. So I want to hop into BMG Drive. I want to see how this thing is on the track. I want to see. I want to compare this thing against like a Miata and see how a Miata can perform. So if I can find maybe like a Miata mod, I'll compare them head to head. But I'll see you guys in BMG Drive in just a sec. Okay, so finally we are in BMG Drive with the Vanderin Bonaire Plus 4. This is the uh, Port Gymkhana, I think it's pronounced. Why are the vents glitched out? I don't like that at all. That doesn't... Oh god. The inside does not look good in this car. The inside of this car does not look okay. Okay, so this is this is the race map. So we're going to go around this race circuit, see what this thing can do on a racetrack, see what it handles. It's not really a racetrack, but on this sort of... Uh, this port-based map, I guess, is what this is. We're going to go in third person here. The car looks pretty good, though, in BMG. The back looks nice. I love the taillights. The headlights look quite good. It's a happy little car, okay? It's like a Mazda Miata, except better in every way, except for price. It's not cheaper, actually. So we are not using any traction aids. Top left, we can see our power and our 0 to 100 km an hour timer, because why not have those there? We're not going to get up to 100 km an hour, though, in that straight, because that'd be absolutely insane. Oh god, yeah, I hate that corner. I'm not the best driver, obviously. But this car so far, in this little track, it feels quite balanced. It's nice. It's definitely a balanced car. Yeah, a little oversteer, though, at low speeds, which is not perfect, but it's what I like in a car anyways. So, uh, a little bit of oversteer, low speeds, so we can get driven nice and easy. Just sort of short shifting there. We're gonna go in... Oh, wait, which way we're we going here? We gotta go around. We're not jumping. We're not ramping that. No. We're not ramping that, but I'd like to. Okay, first gear is not the gear to go into, probably. Well, not bad, though. Kind of slow at the end, or I kind of messed up. I, I messed up at the end, but that's that's okay. A 120, I did do some racket slaps. I didn't save the laps because I finished right before because I wanted to have one clean time here. A uh, 120.9, not bad for my first attempt. I think maybe like a 110 is possible if I drive this car absolutely perfectly. I want to hop into one more quick track because I honestly like this car. I, I like how it drives. I want to see how it drives in, an, in another track. Now, this is my all-time favorite track. It's the automation handling circuit. I love it, Ted Pieces. This is a great course. It's a nice, great handling course. Uh, I'm going to try a little harder this time. We're going to keep it in first person while we're driving. But I just want to know, this car sounds... Ooh. It sounds pretty good. This is a 9,000 RPM Boxer 4. The car, again, is quite light. It's got a great power to weight ratio. It looks quite happy. So that's good. That's good. Okay. Let's go first person here. We are apparently not on the right or left-hand side. That's okay. Then we're staying on the right-hand side. We're going to jump into third here because I don't want to spin too much here. We're going to try it. Our best to get a decent time. Around 120 on this track is quite good. Stay in third again. We're not leaving third, though. Gearing is not the best for this track. We can still stay in third. We got a decent amount of power. Still not left third. Still in third, though. I maybe could have went to second for a smidge there, but third gear is fine. Oh, this is a little over steery. That was a little scary. Second gear we are down to. That 50-50 weight distribution is definitely helping this car. Near 50-50, it's like 49-51. Oh! Oh! Okay, 120.6. That's a decent time. That's decent. Oh, and I have not practiced at all, and it's my second best time ever. Okay, I take that back, actually. 120 is very good. Um, and my best is with a car called the Rivera STD, which is a, like, a, I think it's my diesel supercar, which is a supercar. It is a fast car. This car is just straight up scary fast. A 120.6 on oh, this course. First try. I promise I have not practiced. That's quite good. Uh, let's just hop into like a generic map and just, just drive this car for a little bit and see how it drives. Maybe crash it a little bit. Okay, so I think we're in West Coast USA here. We're just going to go for a bit of a drive. I want to see how this thing drives just like, you know, on normal roads here. I want to get a 0 to 100 test first. Let's just do that on like a normal street. I, I don't want to take this thing to a dragster because, you know, this is a car that you don't take to the dragster. But it's a... You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a road car. It's meant for driving on roads and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's meant for driving in nice, you know, twisty bits and stuff. 4.9 is quite good. And that was kind of a bad launch, too. And not perfect traction. And it was uphill. 4.9 is actually quite decent. Like, way faster than a Miata, obviously. This is like uh, comparing it. This is like competitive to like a Mustang EcoBoost. Like a base model Mustang, probably. Performance-wise, you're to 60. About the same as that, which is quite good. I kind of wish I took off the mufflers, because the car, it could sound a little more alive, you know? It sounds... Oh, my... <laughs> I gotta go back and watch that. I, I honestly, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What, what did we hit there? Like, oh, did we hit this mound? Oh! Uh, that is a mound to hit, if any. We hit that mound, I'm pretty sure. That was nuts. Or maybe it was up here. I don't even know, actually. But the car is... is, is... 
<laughs> it's so totaled. Okay, I'm not breaking. We're going flat footing it. We're good. We're good. High speed stability. I take it back. I take it back. It's, it's not great. No, it's fine. It's fine. The car looks very good. The inside uh, leaves a little bit to be desired, though, for sure. That's okay. That's okay. The headlights work fine. The brake lights. I don't think the brake lights work, actually. No, they do. They work. And the LEDs look quite good in the back. I like how the back taillights look a lot. That's a nice shape. Uh, the rear exhaust. I don't know if I like the sharp point. I don't know. Uh, I think we're lastly, we're going to hop into the jump arena, and I want to see how this car jumps. So finally, we're at the jump arena here. I want to see how far this car can jump. Now, it's very light. It's got great power uh, compared to its weight, at least. It's got decent gearing. I think it's geared to like 180 kilometers an hour, maybe a little more than that. So I think we can achieve a reasonably high top speed and a really reasonably far jump. I'm going to guess about 300 meters. Now, this map is meters. Uh, I'm going to guess it jumps 300 meters. What do you guys guess? Let me know in the comments below. We're just going to launch it. Just launch it. Slow down a little bit right up here. So 240 kilometers an hour is actually what it's geared to. No, no. Okay, no, 280. Is it 240? I don't know, actually. Okay, it's definitely going more than 300. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually a good jump. Three, 400, 410. 415, maybe? Can we break in time? No. But the car. Did quite good. Wow, that was a great jump. That was actually a great jump. Uh, I'll leave a download link if you guys want to download this car below. I apologize again. Not much videos lately. Uh, kind of been feeling under the weather, that, and then working full time, and um, some IRL stuff like you know buying a house and stuff. So it's it's taking up a lot of my time. So thanks for sticking around, guys. Uh, we'll finish off here. Join my Discord link in the description. We're do we're doing challenges in there and stuff still. So uh, make sure to to join that and stay tuned for the newest updates. Um, we're. Before we finish off, though, I want to give a huge shout out to the channel members. And these are people who have went basically above and beyond to support the channel and support me. Uh, so huge shout out to Shalish Sin, DD Man, and Undertaker for being Quad Turbo members. Thanks to Josh and Jay for being Twin Turbo members and everyone else as well. You guys are awesome. And I really appreciate you guys. So thank you so much for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you next time.